Hi, I'm Dan. I hope you're having a great day and have a great conference. I'm having a pretty great day today. It's really fantastic weather outside. Spring is coming. You can unfortunately not see anything of that here because I had to close my blinds. But let's get started. So I would like to talk today about OpenQA, which is an integration testing framework for operating systems, systems under test in general, and appliances. So let's first get started and let me introduce myself. My name is Dan. I'm a software developer working at SUSE as part of the developer engagement program. So I usually uh, develop tools for other developers. And I'm also a package maintainer in OpenSUSE and in Fedora as well, where I maintain quite a few packages. And I'm also a member of the i3 special interest group, where we have recently re uh, released and worked on the i3 spin for Fedora 40, uh, 34. One of my big passions is testing. I think we should really invest more in testing and, we, uh, and uh, it's um, one of my, well, it's one of my big interests. That's also why I got into OpenQA. And in my opinion, it's a pretty cool project. And that's why I like to present it to you. In case you are uh, further interested and would like to stalk me on social media, a few handles are down there on the slides where I occasionally post stuff about technology. So let's take a look at today's agenda. So I assume that most of you have no idea what OpenQA is. And in that case, this is the talk for you because I'll be covering first what is actually what is even this OpenQA thing. And uh, I'll give you a brief introduction, a short sales pitch, what, uh, what it is, what it can do, how it roughly works. And then in the second part, I'm going to talk about more on the side, how you, how you use it. This is going to be all relatively, uh, relatively broad and hand wavy because OpenQA, it can do a whole lot of things. And if I would try to explain it all to you, we'd be sitting here on Monday still. And I don't think that you all, that you want to do that. Well, and at the end, we'll have a Q and A session and a demo if there's time left. So first, let's start out with the elephant in the room, OpenQA. What is this? So in the, uh, in the closest sense, it's a web application. So OpenQA, if you are a, uh, if you are a tester and user, then, open, uh, then for you, OpenQA is mostly a test application. But uh, usually when we refer to OpenQA, we actually mean the whole the whole box, the whole product. And that's a automated, uh, that's a framework for running automatic tests on a SUT. SUT stands for system under test. So this means this is a framework that's really testing a system and um, not necessarily a certain um, a certain library or a certain program. So the idea behind OpenQA is really you have some kind of uh, some kind of system that you want to test, and OpenQA performs these. Um, in the general, uh, generally, this system under test will be some kind of virtual machine, but it can also be real hardware. OpenQA then can simulate user input. And by user input, I mean stuff like pressing on a keyboard, move, uh, moving the mouse, clicking the mouse, listening to sound, and watching video. So, and by that, I mean watching the, the video output from your system under test. And then it can uh, do uh, image recognition on the resulting video feed and do some, uh, and do comparisons what uh, with uh, expected output. So this is a, this should give you maybe a rough overview. And uh, before we dive into further details, let me try to be a sales engineer, which I'm not. So probably I won't do a super good job at this, but why should you use OpenQA? So first you should use it if you want to automate so-called system level testing. So if you have um, if you have stuff like I have created a Linux distribution, and I want to uh, and I want to test the, that the installer still does the right thing, then 
um, OpenQA can do this setup for you. And in a general sense, anything that does user-centric testing. So as I said, imagine your, your installer. Um, if you have, I don't know when's the last time that you've maybe installed a Linux distribution or Windows or whatever operating system, the installer part is relatively boring to do. And um, I have never really been part of QA, but I assume that doing QA on installers uh, every time before a new release is pretty dull since you just launch the thing and then you click next, 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 select the hard drive, overwrite everything, wait five minutes for the packages to install, yada, yada, yada. Takes a lot of time. It's really boring. OpenQA can do this stuff for you. So if you have some kind of, if you have something like an installer or something that runs long and that can be, uh, OpenQA can automate this stuff for you. When should you use it? Um, so another reason why you should use it, it can run your tests on bare metal. So in case you are, um, in case you want to ensure that your, um, that your system under test still works with the newest snapshot, it can test this really on real hardware. So if you are, let's say you're interest, you're building a spin of Fedora or of OpenSUSE or of Gentoo, Debian, Windows, uh, Android, and you want to make sure that this still works on your late, uh, that your latest kernel version works on the Raspberry Pi or on a Jetson Nano or whatever, OpenQA can push your newest image onto this hardware with a few, uh, with some tweaking from your side and then run all your tests on that. It also supports for you if you are maybe not a, uh, not a QA person, but a release engineer, someone from release engineering or the release manager. OpenQA supports extensive test labeling and uh, bug, automated bug tracking. So you can attach labels and uh, you can attach bugs to specific failing tests. And uh, that allows you as a release engineer, you see, you get your whole overview of all the tests belonging to a single build. And you will, uh, you will see, okay, this test is failing and there's a bug for that. And then, as, and then you as a release engineer can quickly decide, okay, is this a blocker bug or can I tolerate that and still release? And then you can also review those automatically and so on. And finally, this thing is really battle tested. So this is not something, this is not something that's been quickly hacked together. Uh, that might have been this, the case 10 years ago, but it's extensively used by OpenSUSE. Uh, it's, uh, it's essentially the thing that keeps OpenSUSE tumbleweed rolling and not stumbling all the time. It's been, uh, it's used by Fedora's QA. It's used as far as I, as, as far as I know, it's also used by Red Hat. It's used by SUSE internally to test SLAS and in probably a whole lot more places. There's also some integration to the Linux test, uh, test project. So there's a few, uh, there's uh, actually also a, uh, a test project that uses, um, and that uh, tests the Linux, um, that tests the OpenSUSE Linux kernel and automatically reports that. So with that, I hope I got a few of you hooked. So let's first take a look at the architecture of OpenQA. So OpenQA is, uh, looks roughly like this. You have the web application which consists of a web page. That's what you interact with as a user and a API that's for your command line clients. And then, so this is a REST API that you can, uh, that you can directly interact with, or you just use the command line scripts. And then what OpenQA does is if it gets a, um, if a new uh, test should be started, it dispatches this so to a so-called worker. A worker is, effectively just a process. It can be, um, the worker can run on the machine that hosts this, uh, that hosts OpenQA itself. 
it can be a separate machine so this really depends on your set on your setup and your needs but the worker itself again it's not uh, it's not a uh, it's a relatively dumb thing the main uh, the really interesting part is done by os auto inst os auto inst is a uh, is the I would say that's the heart and soul of OpenQA really. So it does all the heavy lifting. So and now if you come to an actual test, what happens is the worker connects to the system under test, which in most cases is just a QEMU virtual machine, and then it launches OS order ins. That connects via a serial line to the system under test, and sends it commands. So usually you just start out by sending it key presses. And once you have a GUI up and running, you can also start sending mouse events. And uh, in, in many, many tests, uh, you usually upgrade the connection to SSH and establish a VNC connection. And then you can start grabbing the video output. But you don't have to do that. So OpenQA, uh, while will be mentioning image recognition and so on quite frequently, you don't necessarily have to do that. So OpenQA can also run just scripts on your system under test. And uh, there are also tests. Uh, there are also tests uh, in for. Uh, for instance, for OpenSUSE, um, I think OpenSUSE Micro OS has tests that never use any image rec that uh, never test any GUI. Well, and then um, you get the video feed, and that's matched via OpenCV. So, um, how does this thing now look in practice? So, let's take a brief look at the web UI. This is just a uh, this is just a screenshot from the uh, from the web UI. So what you see here is the so-called uh, uh, is the installation test group, and this is from openqa.opensuse.org, and these are individual tests that install OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. So what uh, I uh, I think it will be hard to read in the uh, in the actual presentation, but this is just for the bootloader, the YAST welcome screen, select repository, select installation mode, and uh, and so on and so on. And so what uh, what OpenQA here does is it's get uh, it gets instructed to do the installation of OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. So um, this is how the web UI would look like. And the cool thing is, as I said, OpenQA uh, grabs the video feed out of that. And uh, the nice thing is you can actually look at the resulting video. And so I've just, uh, just grabbed 30 seconds from that. And what you can see here is OpenQA, it uh, launches, uh, it boots from an ISO. Then it adds a whole bunch of additional boot options to be able to actually run, waits for the installer to launch, um, selects all the specific options that were set up, set up users and so on, selects everything the way it should be and launches the installation. And so this is, this is really all that you currently see here running and that you that you just saw that's all automatically set up by openqa so no human had ever t uh, had ever touched this and it's also quite probable that no human actually looked at the output of this as long as the test was successful so really stuff like this for instance like installers that's really where openqa shines um i'd now like to tackle a bit the part of the, the image recognition, just to give you a bro, uh, rough overview of what you can do with this, uh, with the image recognition part. And um, so uh, the thing here is, um, as I said, this is not a mandatory feature that you have to use. You don't have to use it, but uh, if you want to test uh, installers, it's pretty convenient. And so, how this uh, how this roughly works is, you do this image recognition via so-called needle, since you know you search for the needle in the haystack. And a needle is that's just two files. You have a PNG file that is just a screenshot that you want to check against and then a json file that defines which areas in the screenshot uh, should be checked so that means 
uh, I have here an image of a of such a needle. So the image is the screenshot, and the not dark areas are uh, are what should be actually checked. So the important part is why do you don't you check the whole screenshot? That's relatively simple. In most cases, there are changing parts on your screen. Just take a look at your desktop and watch it for 30 seconds and observe how many parts of it will uh, will change. At least your system clock will change. Maybe occasionally you change your desktop background. And also, in most cases, you are not really interested that certain, um, that certain parts of the screen look exactly like this. So for instance, if I, in this case, this is a screenshot from the Fedora server installer. Um, but uh, the thing here is, so this is your installation summary and here the test writer decided that they just want to check that these icons are present here. Now, the thing is, um, the interesting part here is just, I want to check that these, these icons show up somewhere on the screen. I don't care that this is the Fedora server installer. It could be maybe also the Fedora workstation installer. And so this is uh, that's why you just use specific areas. OpenQA will then use OpenCV and some additional image pre-processing to match uh, to find these areas on your screen, and uh, it also does this uh, does this uh, image recognition relatively seldomly. So it does it only about once per second, sometimes faster, sometimes slower. So you can't really rely on this being super fast. Let's go into some more, uh, some more advanced features. So what OpenQA can do it, it can produce test artifacts. That means in the, in generally, that means you can, uh, you can run your installer. Your installer will install on a disk and you can tell OpenQA, hey, grab this disk and, um, uh, and store it. And then you can use this uh, created disk later on. This is this comes really handy in defining test dependencies and scheduling tests depending on other tests, uh, since you can use it. Uh, you can use this for stuff like I have an installation test that runs through the installation of my distro, of my Linux distro, or of Windows or macOS or anything else, and then I have a bunch of other dependent tests that use the created virtual machine disk image and run tests on that. And the the big advantage of this is your your tests of your user space they really run on a installed uh, on an installed disk image that's been created by the installer and not by something else. So you effectively really test the stuff that a user would get. I also uh, previously covered this part that you can uh, that you can add tags uh, to your to your specific tests. You can attach bugs, so you can also uh, these these labels are also automatically carried over if you restart tests. So this is just uh, this is something for release engineering and release managers, uh, so that they can. Uh, that they can get a better overview. You can group tests into uh, into test groups, which is uh, that share certain variables. And then there's a plethora of backends that you can use. So, for instance, in in most cases, you are you will be using virtual machines, but you can also use uh, run your tests really on bare metal. You can use IPMI for connecting to some uh, to remote servers. You can also use this weird thing X uh, thirty two seventy, which uh, well weird is maybe a, you you might be wondering what that is. That's a uh, that's a special console for S three hundred ninety. So if you want to test mainframes, you can do that. So with that, I'd like to uh, show you a bit of the test API. And so please don't run away. Yes, OpenQA is written in Perl. The test API is thus also using Perl. It's not that bad as uh, Perl's reputation is. So um, as you can see, this just looks like most other programming languages. And uh, the test API is 
in most cases, pretty intuitive. So in this case, you say, hey, start this program, in this case, Firefox, send the key alt H that will just open the help menu. And then you do assert screen. Assert screen tells OpenQA. Um, here is a search for a needle with this tag on the screen for by default 30 seconds. So that means um, your needles can have uh, can have one or more tags and mother, and uh, there can be many needles with the same tag and so you can just and so openqa will now try to find something that matches that the context menu is open then you send another key a and that will open the about firefox and so you assert that that shows up as well and since this is just a really short example we do another thing of the test api and that is send this key combination, so close the window until we match a needle that's called desktop. So effectively just hammer Alt F4 until, uh, until we are back at the desktop. So let's get to you, let's get to use OpenQA. And first we should think about when should we, uh, when should you use OpenQA? Well, and uh, as I've outlined multiple times, you should use OpenQA if you want to automate the boring stuff. So your QA person will probably hate you if they have to test a snapshot of your installer every single day. Use OpenQA for that. If you have tests that require some specific hardware, for instance, a Raspberry Pi, use OpenQA for that. It can do this stuff automatically for you. You don't have to have a QA person fiddle with SD cards every single day. If you have appliances, so if you have if you build something on top of a on top of a Linux distribution, and uh, you want to be sure that your appliance installer still works and that the application that you ship that they still work, then OpenQA is a good fit for you. And also in the in the unlikely case that you have a whole ton of hardware or money to buy cloud VMs, but you don't really have a whole lot of testers, then use OpenQA to automate this stuff. Um, but I would also like to, uh, like to say there are, of course, cases when you should not use OpenQA. Um, one of them is if you if you are testing some kind of appliance or application that will do uh, that will have quick changing stuff. So if you really need quick reactions, OpenQA is not for you. Don't test your new video game with that. As I said, you will have this image recognition part is done roughly once per second, sometimes even less frequently. So if you really need to react in a in under less than a second, forget about it. Sometimes even two seconds are, are not enough. Um, if your test should be really, really fast, so if you expect your te whole test suit in, to run in under a minute, I'm sorry, but OpenQA will probably not, uh, not, not be able to do this since it's really testing a real system. It's designed to test a system under test and these things, they are, once virtual machines are involved, things are not really super fast. And also if you have really exotic hardware. So if you have something that just has, doesn't have a serial line, then uh, it's going to be pretty hard. So let's get started. Um, I'd now outline a few, uh, very, gen uh, very general steps, how you sh uh, what you could do to get started with OpenQA. So my recommendation is find an existing, uh, find a project that already uses it, preferably that uses it extensively and uh, take a look around uh, their QA department and how they, uh, and get essentially get your feet wet there so if you are in uh, if you are a fedora contributor go to fedora qa if you are by, uh, in open source uh, in the open source community open open source is a heavy user of open qa once you've got your feet wet set up a local instance there's a link in the slides how to do that um that will help you to run the tests locally which makes things a whole lot simpler read the documentation the official documentation is very extensive it covers all the parts um, it's in a few places a bit uh, unstructured and hard to follow and if you'd like a more guided introduction you can watch a few tutorials that are up on youtube 
Uh, bear in mind though these are recordings of live streams so they take a while but they are really designed to guide you uh, uh, from the from the get-go if you have nearly no experience with OpenQA itself so uh, recommended steps to actually get started and uh, get going with OpenQA so my recommendation is first start out by modifying these needles that are, that are used to mess with uh, to to do the image recognition and uh, that's for the simple reason this is in for for most tests that's the heart and soul of open qa and so um and there's a there's uh, a few details that you should uh, know about and most of them are really best learned by doing so first start out by messing with needles and this is especially really simple to do you don't have to install anything on your machine you can do that from the web ui uh, then take a look at existing tests so if you if your favorite linux distribution is already using this then um, take a look which tests are failing and see if you can if you can fix them if you can improve them uh, so first modify single tests then once you're done with that write your own tests so think about what are certain areas of your uh, of this open on this open qa instance that are not yet covered for example you have a certain application uh, that's not tested uh, that's not tested by open qa and you would like to you would like to get it tested as well then write a test for that once you're uh, done with that uh, take a look at the documentation, find out what so-called test groups and test suits are and create your own test group and learn how to schedule it. And this is probably already, so this, uh, once you're at this stage, you are already a pretty advanced user. And, uh, if you've, uh, if you've gone, uh, if you got to this part, then maybe uh, you are now at the stage where you want to start from scratch because uh, you want to test a different project. And I must uh, admit, this is unfortunately the part where there might be dragons since uh, this is really, this, this really depends on your, uh, on the appliance that you want to test. And uh, there's unfortunately no definite guide how to do that. But if you uh, if you want to do tests uh, with OpenQA that don't require OpenQA scheduler, there's been recently development that allows you to really just run uh, ISO to video inside a container. And so, if you if you want to do just the image recognition part of OpenQA and don't really need the scheduler and all the all the parts around that. Getting started with that is really simple. Just go to the link that's in the slides for the container-based setup. Otherwise, I'd say go to GitHub, grab the minimal example, and start from uh, take a look at that. It's really brief. Then, uh, assuming you, uh, you followed the previous parts, um, uh, schedule a few tests in the main entry point called main.pm. Uh, hopefully you already learned a bit about job groups and test suits. Uh, if not, now is the time to start with that. So uh, learn that part. Try to get, uh, try to really grok it and uh, write your own job groups and test suits for your appliance. Yeah, then the, then magic happens and in the end you profit so sorry that this part is a bit hand wavy but this really depends on your specific needs i'd now like to at uh, since we're getting towards the end i'd like to showcase one example and that's what openqa can do and that's uh, bare metal testing of the raspberry pi this has been uh, this has been done by Guillaume Gardet from ARM, who has set this up for OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. And uh, so what? Uh, so you can see a schematic overview of how the setup work, uh, how the setup is. So you have the OpenQA worker, which is uh, just some machine under, I think, in Guillaume's basement. 
um, and then your Raspberry Pi that you want to test. Now, the thing is you want to test, um, you need to give the Raspberry Pi a new image on every time there's a new snapshot of OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Um, and the problem with that is you create, uh, you need to create this, uh, you need to get the Pi to boot from this new snapshot. Now, um, I think the Pi is sometimes, uh, there is the option to boot from USD, USB, but this is, uh, this is buggy and hasn't really worked too well. So you rely on SD cards. Now you can't really put them into your computer and then run into, run to the Pi, plug that in since that's not really automated. Unfortunately, there's a nice piece of hardware called the USB SD Max, which is a multiplexer uh for sd card so it's effectively you have an sd card in two pcs at once and uh switch between them so how this works is you have the uh the worker first switches the sd card to itself flashes the newest image onto um onto the card switches to the pi then the worker has a serial connection to communicate with the pi uh, there's a Ethernet connection so that they can talk to each other in practice, uh, so that they can talk to each other over LAN and have a more and have a faster connection than uh, than just a serial line. And then, very important thing, the worker can also connect the power state of the Pi. So really. If you are testing stuff, stuff can go wrong. And you really, really want to be able, if all goes wrong and you can't shut down the system under test, you want to be able to cut its power. That's also why it's not so super simple to test for, to test cell phones and laptops with OpenQA, uh, because if you cut their power, they can survive for anything between a few hours and a few days. So, um, Okay, so now to the, to, to the test setup. So you just flash a new image, switch with the SD Max, give the Pi some, uh, give the Pi power. Then the worker connects via the serial line, uses OS auto ins for that, and then all the tests are scheduled. So they, uh, so first only the serial line is used, and then you use SSH for that, launch VNC, and then do your usual jazz. Um, Future additions to that would be also to uh, to test the HDMI output and use some capture cards, but unfortunately this is not uh, this is not yet there. But there's been people who reportedly have done this already. Now, all of this looks in practice like this. So this is Guillaume's uh, This is uh, Guillaume's pretty nice uh, pretty nice setup. What you can see here is the USB SD Max. He has multiple Raspberry Pis in there. These are, as far as I remember, his his OpenQA workers, and you can see the LAN connection. And if you want to see a less professional setup, this is mine under my desk with just one single Pi and a whole uh, and a lot more messy. Um, mess around that. Well, and with that, a call for action. If you, if OpenQA can help you, please use it. In my opinion, it's a really great project. It can make your life so much easier. Your QA people will love you because it's uh, it makes their job much easier, and they can really focus on the hard parts. So, if you think you can, uh, it might be a fit. Get in touch with us. You can reach. Uh, you can reach contributors and users of the op uh, of OpenQA in uh, on IRC on Freenode, in OpenSUSE Factory, and in Fedora QA. And I'd like to also give you a few links. So in case you are further interested, you can find the source code of OpenQA in the OS Auto Inst uh, uh, in the OS Auto Inst uh, organization on GitHub. There's a link to the OpenQA homepage, the instance of OpenSUSE of Fedora, and you can find the slides on GitHub there if you want a clickable version. The obligatory legal slide with all the uh, with all the copyrights. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention, and I'm open for questions. Right. Thank you, Dan. No, that was a great presentation. Uh, we had. A couple of questions. Well, we have one for now. Uh, what operation systems does OpenQA support? Um, any. 
operating system. So you can, it's mainly used for Linux. Um, that's it's uh, that's where it's its main users are Linux distribution. So Fedora, OpenSUSE, um, but you can launch you can use it to test Windows as well. So actually, the OpenSUSE OpenQA instance has a has a test that installs Windows, uh, installs WSL, loads the OpenSUSE WSL image, and then tests that the WSL image actually works. So it's really operating system agnostic. OpenQA itself runs, I think, only on Linux, but it can test anything else. So as long as you get a, as long as you get a serial line to the system, and in case of a VM, that's really trivial. Um, you can you can test BSD. You could test Mac OS. You could test, uh, in theory, also Android. Mm -hmm. Right, and um, I have a, a question. Um, <clears throat> so that does it integrate with Selenium? Uh, no, the not at all. Test. Okay. It has. Uh, it has. N I wouldn't know how. What it has to do with Selenium. I mean, Selenium is a test framework for web pages. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's the um, use case that I was thinking of um, to use the image recognition in testing UI of web pages. Mm -hmm. You could do that, but uh, I. But um, that's not going to be. Uh, that's not um, not really the best use case for mm -hmm. that, since um, the the thing is for. Um, I mean, I I don't. I'm not extremely familiar with Selenium, but as far as I know, Selenium really um, interacts with the uh, with the DOM of your of your web page. But um, OpenQA it expects a video feed, so you will have an additional piece in between, and that's your web browser. So you could you could of course launch or create yourself an image with Firefox and Chromium and all other browsers that you care about, and tell OpenQA to navigate to your web page, and then do image recognition on that part. But you will have the additional. Um, uh, the additional troublemaker, which is the web browser. All right. And since web browsers render stuff differently, um, it might be problematic. So then suddenly the image recognition, uh, it, it, will pr it might work in certain cases, but it will probably be more work than actually help. Mm 